Hello again, this is Joseph with another video of the tire pressure monitoring system electronically and also how to how to reset it. Now for the 2018 Toyota Camrys and for 2015, 2017 Toyota Camrys, the procedure <clears throat> is almost similar. However, one of the steps is not similar. So therefore, <clears throat> to understand the tire uh, pressure monitoring system, there are two methods that are used sometimes. One is the old method, let's say, by the wheel speed sensors, which is also used for um, uh, anti-lock brakes, transmission uh, control module to see the speed of the, of the tires. <clears throat> and the other one is where you have the valve, the transmitter valve, I call it. Now, that transmitter valve is exactly as it implies as a transmitter it has the information <clears throat> of the id of the wheel four wheels of each wheel it has the tire pressure it might even have the temperature of of the tire remember in summertime friction the temperature and the, uh, and the tire pressure goes up especially in hot climates so it has that information now, when you have a transmitter, which, which exactly, that's what it is, a sensor, a transmitter sensor, a transmitter meaning you send a signal. Now, when you transmit something, that means you also have to have a receiver. Something has to receive that signal that was sent from the tire sensors. That's where this comes in. As you can see, tire pressure, warning issue, and receiver. There are, before going into the reset mode, there are four actual th things involved. There's obviously the com combination meter, which is on the dashboard to tell you the displays, obviously of warning lights and other things that's going on, indications of what's going on with the TMP, uh, uh, tire pressure monitoring system. And when there's a fourth, obviously you see a... a um, a light, or you see the, the famous horseshoe with the with the sidewall and the tread on it that looks like a horseshoe like this. So that tells you obviously there's a problem with one of the tires or more. Now this all came about years ago in in history where 1990s uh, Firestone had tires that were blowing out. And of course, uh, unfortunately, people got into accidents, loss of life, and lawsuits, as usual. So what, when do people wake up in this country? Unfortunately, when there's lawsuits and loss of life. When a tragedy happens, that's when people said, now let's pass a law. So this is how it came about, to give you some history. But anyway, like I said, there's two different uh, 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 patterns. One is the wheel speed sensor, where let's say if the wheel speed sensor, let's say it's underinflated. So the so the tire the tire size changes, correct? Since the size gets smaller, the speed will get increased. So therefore, the speed uh, wheel speed sensor detects that and says, okay, there's a problem with this tire. Now, the other thing is, the other thing is that you get pulses from all these revolutions. When something happens and the revolutions, let's say there is a fault with this, the speed increases, the, the pulses might go at a more rapid rate, or if you lose it all together, you might not see anything. However, that's not the main point of this video. The main point of this video is, is they detect the tire pressure at a, at a speed. Sometimes some maker models are stop. Sometimes when you go, every uh, two seconds, they de they determine the, um, what the speed is and all these things. Some go, some you have to be at 23 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour in order to, to always reactivate and give the data to the computer, to the receiver. Whatever it is. Now, before we do this, this is the receiver. This is, the, this is, let's say, your display panel. 
right? As we said, there's a receiver. This is the reset switch. Again, this is for a 2015, 2016 Toyota Camry. This is the computer, the ECU, the computer. So, now let's go over here. If you have a 2018, what do you do? First thing, vehicle park. Switch ignition to lock or off with smart key. Next, then you adjust the tire pressure. How do you know how much the tire pressure is? Open the door of the driver. You see a little uh, um, uh, a little um, sticker, so to say, a placket, and it'll tell you the tire pressure for front, rear, and spare. But remember, that's cold tire pressure. That's when the, when and it has not been driven. And in cold weather, the tire pressure decreases, goes down. In warm weather, it goes up. Now. After that, you adjusted the tire pressure. Let's say you need 32 PSI. You, you put 32 PSI in each wheel. You put the ignition to on. Controls on steering wheel. Select, uh, uh, select gear icon. Okay? On the controls on the steering wheel that you have. This is 2018. Go to vehicle settings. After you have gone through this gear icon or icon with car and gear in corner then you hold and press the ok button when you're holding it you select tpws and then set pressure then you do ok and it should flash three times and then you have to drive 25 miles an hour 10 to 30 minutes this is for 2018. Now, before that, 2015, 2017, which this is the diagram which we're talking about, everything stays the same except not the controls on the steering wheel. There's a reset switch right of right of right next to the steering wheel. You press and you hold it until it flashes three times. Then you go back to the to the regular steps of uh, of. Uh, driving at 25 miles an hour, 10 to 30 minutes. So, as we said, first go through these steps. This one, the only thing that's, that's um, different is you don't have to control the steering wheel. You have a reset switch right uh, uh, right next to the, 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 uh, to the steering wheel. And you press and hold it until the, the icon or that flashes three times. Then you will go back to and you drive it now some vehicles you drive it and it goes out some vehicles you have to press the accelerator within three uh 30 seconds whatever it is every vehicle make and model has their own rules so to say standards how to reset um the the um uh, monitors uh, 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 pressure system for the tires so with that said let's go over here again you have a problem, let's say, even when you change a tire, remember, even when you change a tire, tire rotation, you still have to take that valve, that transmitter valve, and put it in the new tire. Otherwise, this will not recognize it. It'll give you a, f a fault, an indication light of, of the uh, tire monitoring system. That something is wrong. It doesn't recognize it. Because you didn't put the valve in the new one. You left it in the old one. Now, I doubt it. When, if these... I don't know these these tire places that you that you find if they really do it. I don't know, but you will get that indication of that light that's on. So either you can live with that light, or you could put the valve in it and and reset it. But again, even if the light is on, all it is is you have to go and make sure that you have correct tire pressure. Keep the tire pressure correct at all times. <laughs> Not it, nothing. It won't shut off your engine or anything like that. But it'll just. It's better to know that you're underinflated. And you could do something about it. So again, the transmitter valve gets has all the information, the sensor and the tire. We have to have a receiver receive this information. This is this module. So if you have a problem, could be this module. Now, as you can see, B plus, this is 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. This is the fuse, goes over here. Now it goes to the main ECU. 
to give this 12 volts, 12 volts over here, 12 volts over here, a lot of 12 volts, as you can see. And also 12 volts comes to the instrument cluster or the combination meter. And there's another 12 volts that comes here also. Why? Because there's a lot, a lot of modules. And therefore, you'll see more than one 12 volt line. What you also see is computer data lines, computer data lines, computer data lines, computer data lines. They are all communicating to each other. So he's sending him an email, he sends him an email, he sends him an email, he sends him a text, he sends him a text. Everybody's communicating to each other. So therefore, the B plus also comes here. Ignition, IG that's also b plus the ground the communication that we said now if you want to reset it like we just said with the with the switch here it is right here so if you have a problem with the switch or whatever remember if it is electronically this is what your the problem if you don't receive the signal or or you think there's a problem with the receiver that it's trans it is transmitting but you're not receiving this is the culprit now He's talking to him. Let's say you have a front tire, right? Instead of 32 PSI, it measure 20 PSI. Now, you're trying to program it and everything to put the data and everything. However, it does not take it. He's, he, so when this measures 20 PSI instead of 32 PSI, sends him an email, says, hey, I have a problem with the front tire. It measures lower. The commands come in. And it says, this is what you do, put the, put the light on, go, to, go tell this guy to put the light on so that the driver will know there's a fault, right? Or when you go and you press the button, like we said, over here, you reset it, and then when you reset it, the light goes off. This tells this one, hey, take the light off to the driver. So in other words, there these two are talking all to each other. Let's say you have a front tire, you got a new tire, like we said, and you know what? He says, you know what? I, I don't detect anything on that tire. I don't see an, an ID number. I don't see anything on that number. It's a, strange, it's a stranger tire, unknown tire. Talk to him and he'll say, you know what? So we have to put the tire pressure system indicator to the driver, which is this one. This is the result of all these. So it's, this is not the problem. Most of the problem is this one or this one. Because all th this one, all it does is just reset it. The warning light, as we said. So therefore, we're dealing with this one, talking to this one, this one talking to this one, constantly and saying, you know what? This is the information I have. What do I do with it? He says, you know what? Put a trouble code on it, whatever. They're talking to each other. And that's the lines that you see when you, when you talk about program and RDA, and these are the lines. Uh, over here, clear switch, CLSW means you clear the switch. You reset it. Now comes the part where if you have certification ECU, where computer data lines to make sure that the driver has the co correct key, that it matches with the code on the key, matches the code with, to the module. To start off the car, to start off this system a tire pressure warning it makes sure that it's the right key just like we talked about in gm anti-theft system so anyway again basically these are all b plus lines not too much here these are communication lines these are programming lines if you want to program it um and and again nothing major over here this has nothing really to do with the, the display this concentrate on is usually the problem unless the fuses that's why you have to measure b plus but anyway like i said over here um uh, make sure make sure that the tire pressure monitoring system works you can live without it if you want and always measure the tire pressure about the toyotas and the, and the camrys i was asked the question uh, how do they have enough technicians well they Prepare this well in advance. 
months and months ahead, they prepare it. And remember, if there's a fuel pump, that means two people have to go and probably take off the, the fuel tank, a, two, a two-man job. But they have more shifts or more hours. And remember, when there is a recall, what happens is there's probably people who never been at the dealer for repairs. So that introduces new customers, actually, to the dealership. And therefore, they can always point out and say, by the way, we changed this part as a recall. You need maintenance also done for these things and more things, which could bring more money to the dealership. So from that defect, they can make more money, believe it or not. And they build a trust with the customer if they want new cars or whatever. So they turn it around and try, and try to make a profit of it, and many times they do. So they know what they're doing, even at times of recalls. And they might have more hours to, to assist the, the customers that come in. It's more customers to them, actually. So 700,000 customers now, that means maybe many of those customers never went to a dealership after they bought the car or whatever. Well, that means they can sell more maintenance to those customers. They don't lose out, trust me. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I uh, and please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, and the other one, Joe Electronic Schematics from Auto. Please recommend it to um, to your friends if you want. I would appreciate it. Thank you.